Hey y'all, welcome to fifth grade chapter 10, lesson seven. So we're gonna get started with number two. So we can totally still use our conversion method. And cancel out our labels that match top and bottom, left in minutes, that's what we want. And eight times six is 48. Back on that zero, 480 minutes, okay? For our purposes right now, I'm gonna go ahead and streamline this a little bit, okay? So 30 minutes is how many seconds? Well, 30 in each minute is 60 seconds, okay? So I'm gonna take those two zeros, I'm gonna put them at the end, and six times three is 18, okay? All right. 15 hours is how many minutes? Well, there's 60 hours in one, or sorry, hold on. 15 hours and there's 60 minutes in each hour, okay? I'm gonna take that zero, I'm gonna put it on the end. Six times five is 30, carry those three. Six times one is six plus three is nine. 900 minutes, okay? Five years is how many days? Well. There's 365 days in one year, and they want to know about five, okay? Five times five is 25, carry the two. Five times six is 30, plus two is 32, carry the three. Five times three is 15, plus three, 18. 1,825 days, okay? Seven days is how many hours? Well, there is 24 hours in one day and they wanna know about seven of those, okay? Seven times four is 28, carry our two. Seven times two is 14 plus two, 16, 168 hours. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys do seven through nine. Um, I will warn you that on these ones, you get to divide, okay? These ones are going to be division, okay? Seven, eight, and nine. You're going from the smaller unit to the bigger, so you're going to divide, not multiply, okay? Okay. We are going to go down and find the start, elapsed, or end time. And it says the start time is 11 a.m., okay? And we're going four hours and five minutes. Okay. And it wants to know what time we ended. Okay. So 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm just doing that so that we can do our four hours. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 minutes. Well, we don't have a number there, so we put 305. And we started in a.m. We passed 12, which means it's now p.m. 3.05 p.m. Okay. So start time. 6.30. Elapsed time. Two hours. 18 minutes. And it wants to know the end time. Okay, so we're doing the same thing, okay? Oh, let me write in our numbers, okay? So I'm gonna go from 6.30 to 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, okay? So, two hours. So I'm gonna make one, two jumps, okay? So that's 8.30. Then I'm gonna add on those 18 minutes. If I get more than 60, then I have to round the hour up. But if I don't, then I'm fine. So eight, four, and that one stays an eight. So eight, 48, and we're still in PM. There we go, okay? All right. Okay. Okay, so. It wants us to know the start time this time, okay? We did nine 
and three quarters of an hour. Three quarters of an hour is the same as 45 minutes. Okay? Okay. Each quarter is 15 minutes. You have three of those, so 45, 30, 40, or sorry, 15, 30, 45, so 45 minutes. And the end time was 6 o'clock. Okay? So I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to write in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 12, 11, 10, 9, and I'll put 8 in there just in case. I don't know how many that is. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the nine hours first. Okay. So, from 6 to 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So, that's at 9 o'clock, but now I have to take away that three quarters of an hour. So, now... It's actually going to be at 8 o'clock because I'm taking away some from 9 o'clock, okay? And if I'm taking away three quarters of an hour, it means that I still have one quarter of an hour left, which is at 15, okay? And that is going to be a.m. Okay? Okay. All right. You guys do 13. We are going to go down and do 14. Okay. And it says Kira's dance class started at 4.30 p.m. It ends at 6.15. How long is her dance class? Well, okay. So she's going from 4.30 to 5.30. Okay. Here. Let's to 6.15, okay, so I'm going to put, oops, not 15.30, I'm going to put 5.30 in there, okay, and then I can't put 6.30 because that ends before 6.30, okay, so 4.30 to 5.30 is one hour, okay, and then 5.30 to 6.15, well, in order to get to 6, that's going to be 30 minutes, and then that's gets me to six o'clock, but I also have to add in the 15 minutes after that. Okay. That means 45 minutes. So one hour and 45 minutes. Done. Okay. All right. Let's do another one. Okay. Julio watched a movie that started at 11.30 a.m. It ended at 2.12 p.m. How long was the movie? So it started at 11.30. And it went to 2.12. Okay, that one's p.m. This one's a.m. Okay, so 11.30 to 12.30. 1.30. Now I can't go to 2.30 because that's not 2.30 yet. Okay, so we're going to go one two hours okay now to get from 1 30 just to two o'clock that's 30 minutes and then i have to add on that other 12. that gives me 42 minutes so two hours 42 minutes that's a very long movie okay we're going to go over onto the back where you guys are going to do a lesson check, just like always. And we're going to go down to the spiral review. It says, Molly is filling a pitcher that holds two gallons of water. She's filling the pitcher with a one-cup measuring cup. How many times will she have to fill the one-cup measuring to cup to fill the pitcher? So, first, we need to know how many, how many cups are in one gallon, okay? So, we're going to pull out our robot, okay? And all of these cups are attached to this one gallon, okay? So we're going to go four, 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 and four. Well, that's 16. That's for one gallon, okay? But she has two gallons. So we're going to multiply that by two. 16 times two is 32. 32 fills. 32 fills. That'll work. Okay, so which symbol will make the following statement true? We have both of them have one point. 
okay? And then that one has seven and that one has six. Well, seven is bigger than six. Adrian's recipe calls for raisin muffin. Oh, sorry, Adrian's recipe for raisin muffins calls for one and a three quarter cup raisins for one batch of muffins. Adrian wants to make two and a half batches of muffins for the bake sale. How many cups of raisins will Adrian use? Okay. Well, let me turn cap paper inside out. Okay. So one and three quarters, and he wants two and a half of those. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do dead man. Okay. Four times one is four plus three is seven. And I'm going to keep that over four. Two times two is four plus one is five. And I'm going to keep that over two. Okay. I can't reduce anything. So I'm going to multiply straight across. Seven times five is 35. Four times two is eight. Now, you can't have a top number bigger than a bottom number, so eight goes into 35. It's gonna be four times for 32. 35 minus 32 is gonna be three, and my denominator stays eight. Okay, if you have to do your math this way, that is totally fine. I just did it mentally. That's all I did, okay? So four and three eighths, Okay. Kevin is riding his bike 10 and 1 eighth of a mile bike path. He's covered the first five and three quarter miles already. How many miles does he have left to ride? So 10 and 1 eighth minus five and three quarters. Okay. Well, first we need common denominator. So in order to get four to eight, because eight would be the smallest number they both go into, I would have to multiply the bottom by two, which means I need to multiply the top by two. So I would have six over eight. So five and six over eight, okay? But one can't take away six. So I'm gonna borrow one, making it nine. I'm gonna add on an eight over eight, okay? Because I'm using the same denominator. So eight over eight is equal to the one that I borrowed. Eight over eight is equal to one, okay? So, now I'm gonna have nine over eight minus five and six eighths, okay? Now nine can take away six, so we're good. So nine minus five is four, nine minus six is three, and my denominator stays the same. Four and three eighths of a mile, okay? Make sure that you pause to write down your work. Thanks for hanging out for chapter 10, guys. Come on back.